I would like to show you how to uh, assemble a Super X from my uh, Shapeways uh, shop. So, uh, I'll first show you uh, what pieces there are. There is, of course, uh, the core. Uh, you should have six of these uh, square standard pieces, and they are divided into two groups of three. There are standard pieces which have a short stem, and there are standard pieces which have a slightly longer stem. So this is the one with the longer stem, and that's the one with the shorter stem. And on the core there are uh, three square indentations, and the pieces with the longer stems fit into these indentations, and they behave like bandaged pieces, while the pieces with shorter stems uh, turn around freely. So those are the square pieces and the core. Uh, you should have 24 of these pieces. Um, well, they don't really have a name. They're equivalent to the pieces on a dinorhombic dodecahedron. So those are these internal pieces. You should also have 24 of uh, these internal pieces. Um, these pieces um, kind of surround the edges. Um, I, I actually call them corner supports uh, because they fit in this way into the corners. Uh, you should have these uh, very tiny edge pieces. There should be 12 of these. But these pieces aren't really necessary at all. So if you don't have them, don't worry about them. There sh you should have 12 of uh, this edge. You should have eight uh, triangular centerpieces, eight of this piece, and you should have uh, 24 external pieces. Oops, so 24 external pieces. And finally, the corner pieces. You should have eight normal corner pieces. Uh, sorry, you need seven normal corner pieces and one bandaged corner piece. You can see this one has a little bit more material. This uh, provides the bandaging on the 2x2 two two cuts. So seven of the unbandaged type and one of the bandaged type for eight corners in total. And you will also need um, some uh, metric tree uh, screws. So uh, these are the ones I use. Uh, 10 millimeters long. The length doesn't really matter so long as they're not too long. They'll stick out too far in the core. But 10 millimeters is a nice size uh, screw to have. Okay, let's get started. Uh, we'll start by taking the core and three of the uh, long center pieces and simply feed your screw in. And again, a long center piece goes into an indentation on the core. So that goes in and just screw that. Well, you can just keep screwing until you start feeling some resistance. So now I'm feeling a little bit of resistance and it's quite tight. I'll just take back a small turn. And a little bit more. Now it kind of has a little bit of wiggle room. And I can just check whether I've got this screw right by attempting to put in one of the uh, dinorhombic dodecahedron pieces. And they're still quite tight, so I'll just loosen the screw a little bit. And now these fit in okay. Yeah, that's about right. You don't want this thing to be too loose. So, just put in a second square centerpiece. Again, one with a long stem. And screw that tight as well. So once, I go, once again, they, these go into the uh, indentations on the core. Oh dear, look at the weather. There we go. And that fits nicely. So now I've got two of the square centerpieces in place, and as you can see, thanks to the indentations, they can rotate. Uh, so now, uh, you see, this is where the last uh, bandaged tender piece will go. So right up here, we'll need to put the bandaged corner, so 
and this is the bandage corner and it will fit here just like that and then my final square centerpiece will go in like this so I've got the bandage corner uh, put in against the centerpiece and then here's the final indentation for a bandage centerpiece so that will go in and we'll screw that side as well Let's see and you can see this piece rotates reasonably well. It, it's a little bit tight, but that's good. So now we'll take three of these tiny edge pieces and those um, slide in between the square center pieces against the bandaged corner. So just like that. And I'm actually going to put a little bit of silicon oil in here. For best results you should first assemble the puzzle, break it in, take it apart once again and then lube it. And I'm just going to get, go ahead and lube it right ahead. And so now this turns a lot more smoothly already. And I'll also put a little bit in this groove. Okay, so there we go. So now we take one of the uh, triangular center pieces, and well, right here's my bandaged corner, and here are three center holes, and you can just pick one of them to put in the corner. And try to make sure your screw goes in straight. The material is pretty strong, so you don't really need to worry about stripping the holes, but some people have managed to do it, so be careful that you don't make them too tight. So with this you can just keep turning until you start to feel the resistance increase, and then just take a little turn back so that you can just barely rotate the a piece. Yeah, there we go. And now you want to take one of these uh, dynorhombic dodecahedron pieces, and you'll see on one side it has a little uh, lip, and this lip needs to be facing outward from the corner piece, from the from the triangular center. This will become a corner, and just slide it in like this, and just keep pushing. And now you need one of the um, uh, corner support pieces, Look like this, and those go in like so. And then take one of the uh, large edge pieces, slide that in like this, and then finally uh, take another one of the uh, dynorhombic dedicatorium pieces and put that in as well. And then just push this forward until it's neatly aligned and now you can take your first outer piece and that slides between the edge piece and the bandage corner piece uh, so there you go, now we'll just repeat that for these three holes So, a triangular centerpiece. A, a dinorhombic dodecahedron piece, again with the lip facing outward. A 
uh, corner support piece, an edge piece, and another Daniel Roma dodecahedron piece. Rotate it into place and slide in the edge. So now we'll move on to the uh, third corner. Yeah, it takes a little bit of the start to get the screws in, but once you get them going, it's fairly easy. I'm actually going to put a little drop of lubricant here, like that. So, a dynamic rhombic dedicatory piece. As you can see, I'm not being overly gentle with these pieces, but uh, they can handle it. But I'm just putting in some more loop right now. So, a corner support piece, one edge piece, and the final, I know, we'll make the key piece. So there you go, that's the first corner. We'll just give it a twist to make sure it works. And it does. Okay. I will put in uh, one of the uh, short square sanding pieces now. So carefully put in your screw. So now we've got one more of the square center pieces on, and we'll take another one of the uh, nylon-rhombic dodecahedron pieces. And this time we'll put the lip against the square center piece, and we'll rotate it in place against this triangular center right here. And now we simply need one more corner support, which uh, oh, I'm sorry, a corner support which will go in like this. And it will have the lip uh, sort of facing outward and then right here and uh, there's place for another one of each tiny edge pieces and you can just push that in there and now we will take one of the um, corner pieces which will slide in here and I will apply some more of my silicon this really makes a difference towards the turning. And one more corner support like that. And an edge piece. So 
so now if you want. So now you actually see we have created one more space uh, for an edge piece. Or, well, not an edge piece, an, an audio piece. There you go. And so now we can put one, two more triangular centers on. Uh, by the way, if triangular centerpiece is going to holes that have three arms surrounding them, if a hole has um, four arms surrounding it, like this one, this is for a square centerpiece, and this one with only three holes is for a uh, triangular centerpiece. It It's kind of obvious from the ones which have indentations. But it's it's nice to know all the same. So, a, this is just the same as uh, as we've done uh, three times before. I've got the triangular center on, and I will slide in a dinorhombic dodecahedron piece. Yeah, this initial sliding is always a bit tricky, because uh, you don't have much uh, leverage to do the turning. And if it's not perfectly aligned, this is kind of hard to do. You can actually cheat and try to push it around with your screwdriver. Oh, by the way, be careful when using a screwdriver to push pieces. Um, it does hurt if you stab yourself with a screwdriver. There we go. This really was a case of alignment. The square center wasn't perfectly aligned with the um, other pieces, so it became kind of hard to make the turn. But now we're there. So, one more uh, corner support, and uh, one large edge piece. Oh, yeah. And a dinorhombic dodecahedron piece. So there you go. And now we'll put in the uh, second frame of the centerpiece. Well, we've seen it many times before. It's a dinoromic dodecahedron piece. A corner support. An edge piece. And one more 
Nine in a row, we did a key drum piece. Turn it into position. And one outer piece. So now we'll take the next to last square center piece. So I just turned it till I noticed the resistance getting stronger and then it just took a little turn back. So we've got our square center piece in there and we'll take another one of the uh, dining room with the dodecahedron pieces and turn that into place. So now you want to take a, a corner support piece and put it in this way and we'll also take one of the uh, very small edge pieces which will go in like this and now we'll insert a large edge like this Another uh, corner support and a dino roll with the piece, and this just slides right in like so. And now we can uh, place one corner over here, so corner piece. Like that. Oh, and at, at this point, it's probably easier to just um, put in the external pieces as well. So those are my, my external pieces, and my corner goes against them. Uh, and now we want to uh, put another corner support here. And Finally, one small edge. There we go. And we'll repeat the same on the other side. So an external piece. Another external piece. A corner piece. A corner support. There we go. And a tiny edge piece. Oh, stay right there. Oh, alright. Put it in skewed. Now we're nearly there, we just need to put in these two uh, triangular center pieces. So, oh dear, I've uh, miscounted initially. <laughs> uh, you should only have seven of the um, 
tiny triangular pieces because one of them is uh, replaced by the bandage corner piece. Oh dear. So now, well, just screw this one again in. So we've got the uh, dynamic dedicator piece in there, and we'll put in our corner support uh, and edge piece. One more dynamic dedicator piece, and this will just turn right into place. Okay, looks nice, and we can put in another external piece. So now we're going to put in our final corner piece. Well, corner triangular center actually. So, we've got our center piece in, we'll put in this piece, the dining piece, dining room with the eating piece. Corner support, edge piece, dining room, we got a key drum piece, and twist that into place. And now we can put in our external piece. So now we've got half of the external pieces on, but we're obviously um, much farther than halfway done because we've already got very many internal pieces. However, this is where it is going to get tricky because getting the final pieces in with the uh, last center in place is a little bit harder. Ooh, a little bit of loose powder in there. Anyway, we're going to take the final uh, square center piece and we're going to put in a screw, but only two turns, a few turns. Now that will enable us to take our final four um, uh, dining room without a keyring piece. And again, I miscounted three pieces, which are counted for in the uh, bandage quarter piece. Excuse me for that. So three dining room without a keyring pieces. You don't need 24, you need 21. So. We'll just put the four uh, dining room with the key piece against the center, which is not 
uh, completely screwed in yet. And now we're going to attempt to kind of turn and push. And slowly we'll be able to um, pop the pieces of the dining room with the Cadian uh, parts, pop their feet into the puzzle. But that takes a bit of force and it's quite scary. But thankfully, one strong and flexible is really strong and flexible, so that's good. Now, if you're finding this difficult, it can also help to kind of use the um, screw itself to do a bit of pulling on, on your pieces. Tighten the screw a little Yes, there we go. So now we've got our pieces in place. But I promise you that's the worst part of it. So now we'll tighten the screw a little bit further to make sure this piece is going to stay in place, but not so tight that it can't move around anymore because we need to push in a few more pieces and that's going to be easier if we don't tighten this all the way. Uh, so now we'll take one of the um, tiny edge pieces and with the um, square center twisted to 45 degrees, uh, we'll kind of attempt to push this in. What you can also do is uh, kind of put it in sideways and then hold it in all on one side and push it uh, until it's uh, straight. So now take a, a corner support and the lip on it um, it should point towards the internal uh, tiny edge and you should attempt to push this in as well. It can help to push the tiny piece a little bit off to um, to the side and then just push this in. Yes, there we go. So that's one uh, corner support. And now we'll just push this off a little bit to the left and put in the second corner support. There we go. Uh, I find it easiest to take one side of the piece and put it under here and then kind of so like this, so put lid under the piece on this final set piece and kind of push upward and downward. And due to the screw not being entirely tightened, it can kind of pull upward and the pieces will pop in. So just pull these pieces apart a little bit, the two corner supports and put in the edge. This should be fairly easy. So there you go. That's uh, the edge in place. Uh, so now we're going to take a corner piece and just, well actually, we should first take one, one more tiny edge piece. So we've got that in, that in off. I've kind of got it off to the side, so I'm able to put in my other pieces. So the corner, and 
the corner support. There we go. Just push that in. Now push your uh, mini edge piece under there and take another uh, corner support and you want to put that there. But that's easier if you just twist it a little bit. So, like this, I think this is a nice spot to put it in. There we go. That was easy. And now you just want to um, kind of push this edge in between. There we go. So now I'm not going to put in all of these uh, external pieces yet, because that's just going to make putting in the rest of the internal pieces much harder. So I'll wait to do that and we can just kind of uh, pop them in when we're nearly on assembling the puzzle. So once again, we're going to take the uh, uh, tiny internal piece. And put that into place like this. As you can see, again, it's pushed up a little bit so I can insert the corner piece like that. And then, of course, a corner support. I'll just use my screwdriver and push a little bit both on the corner and on the tiny edge to create a little bit more room. There we go. So now I've got the um, corner support in and I'll just push against oops. <laughs> I'll just push against the edge uh, to make it nice and tight in there. And so be careful that you don't do that and then end up poking your screwdriver into yourself. That's not very nice. And then just put in one more corner support piece that goes over there. There we go. I just use a screwdriver to push the piece in there. That's also a nice trick. You might uh, put a little nick on the internal pieces, but you're not going to see that anyway. So the edge piece. And there we go. I lifted up the edge on one of the corner supports with my screwdriver to put in the uh, edge piece. That's uh, that's also something you can do. Okay, so now it's going to get really tricky because we only have very little space left to work with. Once again, the tiny pieces, these are the trickiest. So I'll put this on first. So that's that piece, and now I can put a little bit of loop here. I didn't loop this final layer yet, because then assembly would have just made a giant greasy mess on my hands, which is not never nice, but now I can get to looping it because I'm pretty much done already. So let's put a little bit of loop there. So I've got my corner piece in place, and now I will take a corner support. And this is of course really tricky, we've got the corner piece in place and a little edge piece in place. So I like again. I like to put the piece under um, the final center and under the corner, and then just um, push on it to get it to go into place. You can use a screwdriver here.
There we go. But we're nearly done, we're nearly done. So now we've just got uh, the quarter piece and the corner support put in. And so, a little bit more there. Now this corner piece is going to be fairly easy, of course. That just pops right in. And now this final corner support. This is the trickiest one. Yes, and of course, I also miscounted my corner supports. And three of them are in the bandage piece. Yes, that's nice. There you go, I got it in. Okay, that was the hardest part of it. Uh, so now we'll, we can snap in the final edge piece. But before we do that, let me put a little bit more oil in there. Like that. So, this piece is a little bit harder than the other edge pieces. What you can do is you can push it under on one side, and then get your screwdriver push it under, under the uh, edge and oops, doing this on video is a little bit harder and place it under the edge and then kind of use it to push away the corner support piece of oh, this like this this is impossible to show. And then push that on the edge and it will snap under the, under the corner support piece. And so now we've got our final layer assembled. And now it's uh, simply a matter of putting in the last few external pieces. So the, one, the ones around the equator you can put in by turning it 45 degrees and it just snaps in when it's turned 45 degrees and you just complete the turn and it's in. So I've got this turned 45 degrees and get this one out of the way. Here we go, those snap in reasonably easily. There we go. So now just eight more against this face. And now, because there are so little pieces in here yet, I can just push these in like so. There we go. So now we're nearly done, just one more piece, 
and our puzzle will be finished. There we go. So now the initial turning is, well, it's actually reasonably cute. Okay, um, of course there's still one screw in there that's not tightened all the way. Yes, I find it. So, you just want to take the final face screw that you didn't tighten all the way yet, and tighten it, once again, until you feel a little bit of resistance, and then take a turn back or so. Oh yeah, this turns very nicely. Of course, initially it's, it's going to be a little bit, um, it's going to take a little bit of work to get this to go. But after you break it in for, well, a little bit of time. I actually, I like to keep my puzzles on my desk and just play with them while I'm waiting for my computer to do something. And then they'll very nicely break in over time without me doing very much work for it. So, but you can see this, is, this turns fairly already. I mean, this one is far much loose for this, just from a little bit of breaking in. So, that is how to assemble a, a Super X.